So we are meeting as judges uh, to discuss where we are from, uh, where we want to go, and uh, come up with a strategic plan towards uh, uh, the end of uh, probably this month or uh, the month after. The court, all the members are not full time in Arusha. I think that's a, that's a major a challenge to the court. Um, the, that is uh, the most, the foremost, I think, a, a challenge to the court. Uh, the other challenges are what you would similarly find in uh, national jurisdictions. Uh, the budget, uh, which you have to look at in, in the context of what happens in the bigger society. Uh, I think uh, the budget is still uh, uh, limited for the court. We hope our partner states will understand the need to deliver justice to the people of the uh, East African community so that the court is powered in Arusha, sees every day, and then uh, one doesn't have to get worried that I'll file the case today and the court is not there. And even where that were to happen, that you are filing a very urgent case today and the court is not sitting, we bring the judges there. If it is urgent, we'll fly them there and they'll be able to hear you. Now, as I told you, we don't have criminal jurisdiction, so we don't deal with rape, we don't deal with defilement. The cases we deal with are the breaches of the treaty. We need to look at Article 6, Article 7 of the treaty. Where there's been violation of the treaty, that is where we, have, we come in. For example, uh, where a case has taken too long to be had, 20 years or so, like one of the judges was spelling, somebody can sue his government saying this was against the rule of law for a case to take this long. That is a civil matter. It will not be a, uh, it will not be a criminal matter. You can come and the court, if the facts are correct, you can say, yes, this government uh, went against the principles of the treaty. By delaying to hear this case for so long, therefore, justice delayed is justice denied.